good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, depending on where you're joining us from. Uh, thank you so much for joining the ACTT orientation webinar today. And come to the ACTT course. We're really excited to have you here and um, for the next four weeks to learn together about cybersecurity. Uh, so we'll begin by going through a bit about the course overview just so that you know what to expect uh, in the next four weeks and then we will look at how to access the course content on uh, the different platforms and then from then we'll talk about some of the course logistics that you may that will help you through your learning journey uh, over the next four weeks so the course is advanced cybersecurity training for teachers course and um which is abbreviated ACTT. And we are very excited to have uh, you as participants in this course. Uh, the course is divided in four, into four weeks. Uh, therefore, in the four weeks, you will learn four different mm -hmm. modules. And in those four different modules, you will have uh, different types of course content. Uh, so you will have videos, you will have articles, and you will have an infographic as well. So that is the course content itself. And then to assess what you have been learning, uh, we will have assessments. Uh, so this will be in the form of quizzes for specific topics or a module assessment for the entire module of that week. And then we will also have uh, some polls depending on the week. So please, uh, when we do set out the announcements for the different uh, weeks, please go through them so that you know what you expected of uh, during that specific week. I have seen that most of you have started uh, interacting with the course content. Uh, week one is already uh, is already up and running and we are seeing amazing progress. Um, so we encourage you to continue uh, learning through there. And then um, we will have content posted every Friday. So as you may have seen, you only have access to week one right now. So towards the end of this week, which is Friday, you will you will find week two and then uh, subsequently there will be week three and then week four. So content will be published, um, new content rather, will be published each week. And then for each week, you will have a weekly webinar. Um, it's only for week one where you have two webinars, which is the orientation webinar and then week one webinar which uh, we will send an invite to after the orientation webinar. So the webinars are expected to be on Thursdays and the time will be communicated when you receive the webinar invitation. Once you receive the webinar invitation, please uh, register um, and do not share the link that you receive publicly because we want to keep our webinars very secure and only accessible to the participants of the course. Uh, for the course contents, uh, there will also be weekly activities, which will be in the form of um, forums or other discussions. Um, you will have instructions on how to participate in these forums. And in, in the next few minutes, I will show you how exactly you post to the forums and which forums you need to respond to. Um, and each week, you will also receive an announcement uh, welcoming you to that specific week. You'll also receive um, a weekly summary of what all the insights that were shared in the webinar, in the in the webinars, as well as in the activity forums that you'll be sharing um, information in. All right. Uh, so next, we are going to to look at the Mooket platform and also look at the MOOC for Dev application should you be accessing the course on your mobile phone. Uh, please, if you do have any questions, please uh, feel free to use the Q&A section of Zoom and someone will respond to you or will respond to you live. So please use the Q&A, don't use the chat because uh, the chat gets flooded a bit of uh, a lot of the times and uh, when it's flooded then we we may miss your question, so please use the Q&A section and we'll be able to get to your question. So I'll quickly share my screen so that I can take you through a walkthrough of how to access the course. So this is how the MOOCIN platform on, on your browser will look like. 
and this is where the, all the course content will be. So we do receive a lot of questions about um, when are the webinars happening, where is the course content, how can I access it? And the purpose of this orientation is to show you exactly where you need to find the course content as well as um, how to access it and to also reiterate the fact that these webinars will be to complement what you've already learned during each of the weeks. Therefore, the webinars will not, um, they, they're not what will be teaching you, uh, but it will be to complement what you've already learned. So the course is um, basically very self-paced. That means that during the week, you can interact with this content the way you would want to at your own pace, at your own time. So take the time to to go through the go through the week one's content and um, ad attempt the quizzes as well. And by the time we get to the webinar, that uh, webinar will complement or rather it will synthesize all the things that you have learned through week one. So on the MOOCET platform, uh, we have a resource that is week zero, and week zero is mainly just to show you how to use the MOOCET platform how to use the MOOC for Dev application, as well as the ACT3 Telegram group that we have created. You can go through these uh, three things just to have a feel of how the platform is like. And if you're using your mobile, um, the mobile application, then the, we've also created a guide on how to do that. So that is for week zero. And then um, you can see week one content is already live. So once once week one is over, you'll be able to see week two, and then you'll also be able to see week three as we progress through the course. So when you come to week one, you will see that uh, these are the different lectures, the different lectures and the quizzes that you need to attempt during the week. Um, attempting the quizzes will actually contribute to whether you get a certificate at the end of the course or not. So please go through the course content and then attempt uh, attempt the quizzes and uh, from there you'll be able to receive your results and um, you'll be able to get a certificate at the end of the course. All right, so that is on week one. Um, for the course content, we mentioned that there will be videos and articles. And so, for example, all the things that you see, all the lectures you see that have a timer, a time on them, that means that that is a video. So for example, this um, is an eight, uh, eight minute video that is teaching on attack vectors. When you click on it, you'll be able to, you'll be able to watch this specific video and uh, learn more about attack vectors. You can also see there are documents here that um, have been uploaded to complement the, the videos that have been created by the course instructors. So once you click on on the on the document icon, uh, you'll be able to see that there's a write-up, there's a transcript of the presentation itself, and there's also a, um, a PowerPoint presentation of what was presented in the video. You'll be able to download these uh, documents for offline use. When you're watching the videos, so for example, when you click on this one, you will see that you can enable subtitles on the video. So it helps you to comprehend everything that the instructor is saying. Uh, if they're speaking too fast, you can also be able to change uh, the speed of the video. And you do that by clicking on settings and you're able to uh, change the playback speed. If uh, they were speaking too slowly, you can increase it and uh, you go through the video faster. Uh, if they're speaking too fast, you can reduce it so that you can properly hear everything that they're saying. So I hope that is uh, very clear. Now on to the ones that do not have any timers uh, over here. That means that that specific uh, lecture is in the form of an article. You will see them characterized by this PDF written on the, on the document uh, icon. So when you click on it, as you can see, there's no video for this lecture, so it is in the form of an article. So once you click on this um, PDF icon, when you click on it, it will be able, it will open in another tab. As you can see, it opens in another tab and you're able to read um, through the article itself. 
So this is the mobile wireless and mobile device attacks article. As you can see, the instructor also provides additional resources, additional links that you can click on and read further about um, these attacks. You can also download it by clicking on this, um, on this download icon right there. So once you click on that button, you'll be able to download the article uh, for offline use. So at the end of each week, you will receive um, an infographic that summarizes some of the key things that were taught during that specific week. The infographic is also a PDF. And once you click on it, you'll be able to <clears throat> you'll be able to download it uh, for offline use as well as to summarize what you learned during the week. So this is uh, week one's advanced uh, cyber attacks infographic. This is an infographic that you can quickly share with other people that uh, were not even in the course, but they're able to easily uh, learn what you learned uh, during the first module of the week. All right, so, so far we have talked about the course itself, the course overview and how to um, access the different, the different um, learning materials, that is videos and articles. And we've also talked about the, the infographics. I want to talk just a little bit more about the quizzes. Uh, so the quizzes, you have multiple attempts. You do not have to just do it once and that's it. You can actually do it uh, multiple times to improve your score. And this will improve your chances of uh, getting a certificate. And later on, we'll talk about the certification criteria so that you're very well aware about what is required of you so that uh, you may be able to get a certificate at the end of the course. So that is the course form. Uh, when we, we look at the the left of your screen, you will see different navigation uh, areas. So for example, we have announcements and announcements are very important in this course because this is the only way that, um, rather this is one of the ways that the course facilitators get to give you information about the course. So for example, as you can see, we have um, all these announcements that we have made since the course began yesterday. So we have, uh, for example, this is where you will get your invitation for all the different webinars. So once you click on this one, you'll be able to uh, get the, the link to register for all your webinars. So please, um, when you have a question and maybe you've not received these uh, announcements on your email, they are actually accessible on MOOCIT and you can come on there and see exactly what is required of you for that week. For example, uh, the welcome to week one announcement details every activity that you need to do during week one. And those, so this can help you to track your progress and to make sure that there's nothing that you have missed. As you can see, it details all the quizzes, all the articles that are there and all the discussions as well. So please uh, keep on checking the announcements. These announcements will also be sent to your email. But should you feel that that is overwhelming, you can just come to the announcements um, tab and you'll be able to see all the announcements that the course facilitators have made. So next we have resources. And in resources, this is where you will get a lot of your, a lot of the guides on how to do, on how to do the activities for a specific week. So for example, uh, here are week one activities. And as you can see, there are guides, all the guides are detailed right here. So um, when an instructor references resources, you have to click on resources and then you'll be able to, under that specific week, you'll be able to get all the guides for the activities that you required to do. So since we are on activities, uh, let's go to forums because that is how you get to uh, interact with the different activities. As you can see, we already have a lot of um, activity, rather a lot of participation on the on the forums, and we really applaud you for that. Uh, so, for example, there's an introduce yourself forum where you get to tell us where you're from and what you're excited to learn about um, in this particular course. And uh, here you can connect with other. Uh, with other participants either in your country or in your region and it's just a really nice space for you to introduce yourself and then there are now the weekly activities um, as you may have noticed we want to make 
uh, cyber security for you as practical as possible. And so these activities are for you to implement the things that you learned theoretically in the course content. So this is where you get to learn and share with us what you have learned as well. So for example, if we open the first activity, which is activity 1A, when we open it, you can see that um, the instructor here is asking you to share about um, about phishing and there's she's she's actually added links on how to do that specific activity and then after you after you're done doing the activity then you come here and you post your response to uh, respond to this particular activity so by responding it will reflect that you have actually uh, completed this activity. I would like to encourage you to actually do the activities and not just respond without um, having done the activities. So we would want to keep this as, as objective as possible to ensure that we are all learning. So please avoid uh, posting irrelevant details on these activities. So once you're done posting, you just click on go back and uh, you're able to see the other activities. So all the, all the activities that will, you'll be required to do, you will find that they have this pin on the side. They will appear on top and those are the ones that you need to respond to. As you can see, they have all been pinned so that they don't get lost in the other in all the other forums that have been created by other participants. So when you click on forums, the first activities will be those that you're required to actually participate in. I do hope that that is very clear. Then next, um, since we are all learning and we would like to track how we are progressing in the, how we are, we are progressing in the course, this is where you will be able to find all your progress details in the course. So when you click on my profile, you'll be able to see progress summary, how many videos you've watched, the topics you've created. Uh, and by topics you've created, these are the forums that you've created or responded to. So comments posted will show on every forum that you respond to will be a, a comment that is posted. And then the downloads of the slides that you have um, downloaded. So if I minimize that by clicking on the minus, I can see the progress details here. Um, so if I click on the plus, I will expand everything. And as you can see, I'll be able to see the lectures, the lectures that I have, um, I have interacted with. As you can see, I clicked on uh, wireless mobile dev uh, devices and I downloaded the article and it shows me that I have 100% uh, progress. So if I watch the attack vectors video, the progress here will also change. And then lastly, when you do, when you attempt the, when you attempt the quizzes and the assessment, your, your status here will change to completed, and then you will be able to see your results here. Please take a, take time to always, after each week, to review uh, your assessment and to see how well you're performing. And if you've not performed well, just go back to the quizzes and you're able to actually redo them and you improve your scores. Once you have contributed to different forums, you'll be able to click here and you'll be able to see uh, the topics that you've contributed to. Please make sure that you're contributing to the forums that have been created by uh, your facilitators, just to make sure that you're doing all the you're doing all the practical activities that are in the course because we believe that we learn by doing and uh, when you attempt these activities then you'll acquire these skills to protect yourself and to protect your students as well uh, when they're using online tools and online platforms. I think I have covered um, everything about accessing, accessing the course content on, uh, on a web browser. And now I will go briefly through the guide that we created for accessing the course on um, on the app on the app on the mobile application. So when you go to Course Home and you go to Week Zero, you'll be able to see uh, how to use the MOOC for Dev app. 
So once you click on it and you click on the PDF here, you'll be able to access the, the guide that we have created for you to use the mobile application. So as you can see, you we take you through how to download. So we have um, we have given you every step and how to access the course. We've given you the screenshots for everything that you're supposed to see and how to interact with the course content. So if you're using um, a mobile application, please make use of this uh, particular platform. So once you've logged in with the, the credentials that you created on, um, on MoKit, you'll be able to log in and then access the course. Once you access the course, um, the first thing that will be displayed will be, of course, the course homepage where you will see all your weekly content. Uh, when you want to interact with week zero, you just click the arrow and you'll be able to see um, all the content that has been posted under week zero. And then the same for week one. And as more content is availed to you, you'll be able to see it on the course homepage. So when you click on week one, for example, you'll be able to see all the course content that is under week one. When you click on the arrow, you will then go to the, that specific lecture and you'll be you're able to complete it. So please note that some lectures do not have videos and this, this is specific um, for mobile applications. I we would want you to know that uh, for the lectures that do not have videos, that on your mobile application, you will still see the, the placeholder for a YouTube video. When you see a blank YouTube video, then that means that, that that specific lecture does not have a video. So an example is what is shown here. You will just see a blank screen. And so uh, please click on um, the PDF icon that is right there, and you'll be able to access the article for that specific uh, for that specific account. And then uh, to access all the things that we've talked about, that is the announcements, resources, forums, uh, please click on the three bars right here and you'll be able to, to access uh, the course home, announcements, resources, forums, hangouts, profile, surveys, and the settings. And um, this is very similar to what is already on the other side. Uh, so I will not go through them again, but I wanted to highlight the very last bit, which is settings. So a lot of times we've gotten complaints that, um, we've gotten complaints that my progress is not synced. I finished the article or I finished the video, but it still shows that I have not, I have not completed it. So if such a thing happens to you, please click on settings. When you click on settings, you'll be able to uh, sync the progress and then you'll be able to see your analytics reflect on the other side. When you want to check progress, again, you will click on your profile and you'll be able to see uh, everything that you have done in the course. So I hope that is clear um, about the Mookit platform. Now I'll invite uh, Malusi to take you through the next um, the next steps about uh, the ACTT course. Thank you, Patricia, for that. So I will cover certification criteria um, as expected for all our learners, and you are able to get two certificates. I think most of us are joining us from the CTT um, from the previous course. Uh, so you've learned that you're able to get two certificates. So that's a certificate of completion as well as a certificate of participation. So the criteria for getting a certificate of completion is as follows. One, you need to be able to get 60% and above on all the quizzes and assignments that are in every week. That's 60% and above uh, on every quiz and assignment throughout the course. And then secondly, you have to participate in at least half of all the activities throughout the course. So through uh, in ACTT, we have about 12 activities. So please participate in at least six and above of all the activities. So to recap, number one, you have to get 60% and above on all the quizzes and assessments, as well as participating in half, at least half of all the activities throughout the course. So an activity is considered completes when a response is posted in the corresponding forum. And I believe Patricia has showed us how to respond to forums. 
So when it comes to the certificate of participation, um, the participation or no, or no, okay, so I'll start. When it comes to the certificates of participation, you need to get at least 50% and above in all the quizzes and assessments, as well as participating at least half of all the activities. Participation um, in at least half is the same for both certificate of completion and certificate of uh, participation. When it comes to the quizzes, to acquire the certificate of completion, you need to get at least 60. When it comes to the participation, at least 50. So when you get 100 in in all quizzes and assessments, you're eligible for both certificate, certificates. Uh, I think this criteria will be communicated further in the Telegram group, as well as throughout assignments and uh, announcements, sorry, and uh, the email communication. So the next thing I will cover is our Telegram group. I think for most of us joining us from the CTT course, we interacted a lot more on the Telegram group and we saw really good response and feedback from it. And we are using it once more in this course. So I believe a link was shared to all of you on how to join uh, the Telegram group. If you don't have Telegram, it's a very popular communication application. You can download it from Play Store, or from Apple Store if you're using iOS. Um, once you once you download it, you install it on your phone as you you would normally. It also comes as a desktop application for many operating systems. So Linux, Windows, Mac, they all have uh, the Telegram application. So from there, once you just click the link that was shared with you, and I believe it will be shared as part of this, um, as part of as part as, as it will be shared in the chat. I'm hoping. Um, just click the link and it will take you directly to uh, our Telegram group. Uh, we have about 300 or more participants already, and I believe almost all of our all of our trainers are part of the Telegram group. So the Telegram group is allows us to share comment, allows us to share relevant information with each other regarding the course. Uh, it allows us as as, pan, as trainers to give you announcements um, that you might not have gotten to share more resources to answer questions that you might have um, and so on and so forth so once you join the telegram group there's a pinned there's a pinned message it has been pinned by patricia so that message contains a document that explains uh the rules of engagement within the group it explains how it explains the expectations we have of you as participants in the telegram group and it explains uh, how to use the group itself. So I want to reiterate a few things about the Telegram group based on our previous experience. Uh, we'd only like to see, or we'd encourage you to only share relevant information in a respectful and well-guided manner. So we want to have conversation that's, that builds each other and we want to avoid things like knee calling or like bashing each other or stuff like that, which we saw a bit uh, in, the last, in the last group. Secondly, we want to avoid any manner of marketing, sales, advertising. Um, and once that, that is seen from you, we'll send you a warning. And if you do not heed to the warning, we will automatically ban you from the group. Um, but when it comes to asking questions in the group, uh, I think it would, it would be prudent for everyone to look through at least the content itself and see whether that question has been answered or not. Because uh, in our previous group, we kept seeing, we kept repeating or reiterating something that had already been answered quite um, severally, severally <laughs> in, in the group itself. So before you ask a question or before you inquire about something, please go through the chat or search, use the search functionality to look whether or not that question has been answered. And if it has not been answered, then feel free to ask your fellow participants or to ask directly to, to the trainers or the facilitators of the course. Uh, then after that, I would like to cover how to use. So because of the nature of this course, um, it's a global course and all of us are in different time zones. All of us are in different time zones. And I think this is where Patricia, you might help me. Uh, I don't have access to a laptop because of uh, the electricity issues. So if you if you want to, so we will send all our correspondence using GMT Greenwich Mean Time. So, if you have trouble um, converting that to your time zone in order to join in when it's appropriate, 
we're going to use a tool called survey time. So when it comes to using survey time to convert your, to convert the time we're sharing, which is in GMT to your time. So on the search bar, you will input GMT, which shows you the current time in GMT, which is in cities like London, and I think Accra, Accra in Ghana. So Ghanaians will have it easy with the correspondence. And then, so let's say for someone like me who's in Nairobi, I want to figure out what this time corresponds to my time. So I will put East African time or I will put my actual city, which is Nairobi. All of East Africa is under East African time. So you will see it will correspond directly to, right, it will correspond directly to 7 p.m. So East Africans should join um, our webinars or our video sessions at 7 p.m. So if you're somewhere in India or Pakistan, then India, you should be able to join us at 10 p.m. I know we, we we are really trying to accommodate as many people as possible. And I know for some individuals in, in the in, in the cohorts, it might not be as convenient for you. Uh, but we for that reason, we also record our webinars and our video sessions and we're able to send them to you. And also we have um we have accommodations to have you ask questions prior to our webinar in case you have any concerns or if if you have any questions for our panelists. Um and I believe that's it. Uh, we will share the links to this tool. Uh, we also have another tool called World Time Buddy, but also you can decide to choose whichever one. Yes, World Time Buddy. It does exactly the same thing. You just need to input the GMT time and then input your your city or where you, you're joining us from. So if you're in Karachi, in Pakistan, if you're in Mumbai, um, it should be able to tell you what a, what the exact time you should be joining us. So from what you can see on the screen, so in Nairobi it's 7 p.m. but in Beijing it's midnight. So this tool really helps you to organize your time and to be able to um, schedule yourself well in accordance to the times we will share for for the webinars. Um, yeah, so I will send uh, I'll send it back to Patricia. So she was meant to cover joining webinars and navigating Zoom. So I think all of us here have been able to join the webinars. Uh, we have, we now know how to, we now know how to convert the webinar time to the correct timing. And um, you'll be able to receive all this information once you register once you register for the webinar. A lot of the times when you receive that registration uh, link on your email, it will be able to show you a calendar that you can add the session to your calendar so that it reminds you of when to join the session. And I would advise that when, after you've registered to check your email, the email that you've used to register the webinar to make sure that um, you're, you're, you're able to add that specific webinar to your calendar and it will be able to remind you when the webinar time has, a, has arrived. And also on the Telegram group, we'll be sending, we'll be sending reminders uh, just before the webinar begins, uh, one hour before, 30 minutes before, and then just a few minutes before we begin. Uh, so also be very active on... Um, on Telegram because a lot of information and a lot of learning as well will be happening in the Telegram group. So uh, as you may have noticed, we use Zoom mainly. We use Zoom um, as our video conferencing platform of choice. And therefore, we just want to mention a few guidelines on how to use uh, the Zoom features that we have here. As I mentioned in the beginning of the session, we have a Q&A uh, section of Zoom where you're able to ask any questions you may have and we are able to we're able to answer those questions either by typing the answer there or by uh, by answering it live during the Q&A session of, um, of our Zoom of our Zoom webinars and so please when you have questions just look for the Q&A section input your question there and someone will actually get to it and when we don't, we usually collect all those questions and we answer it in a document. Uh, we usually answer it in a document and we share it uh, when we share the webinar. 
the webinar recording with you via email as well as uh, via Telegram, via all these communication channels that uh, we've spoken about. We also have the chat section uh, where you're able to give us feedback really as you you've already been doing so thank you for that uh we see all your thank you messages and we really appreciate them so if um something resonates with you or you want to share something more about the session you can actually webinar you can also tell us where you're joining from just to have activity because we usually start the webinar five minutes after the starting time just to make sure that just to make sure that we're giving everyone just a bit of leeway to be able to join us. So please use both of um, both of those uh, platforms, that is the Q and A and the chat, to interact with us. The other thing is that I've just mentioned that we'll be recording all the webinars for you, and so to access those webinar recordings. One, we use a shared folder. Um, I would request Malusi to sh to paste the link of the of the folder that we usually use. But in each link, in each of the recordings that we share, you'll be able to receive a link in there that you can click on, and you'll be able to receive your uh, the webinar recording and the the guest speakers slides as well. So all that information will be found in that specific folder. It will be very well organized, so you'll be able to access all the different webinars that we have had throughout the course. We also provide these recordings um, in on YouTube as well. So you will also receive a link to the YouTube um, to the YouTube recording, and you'll be able to watch it there. So this is specifically useful for participants who are. Are experiencing connection issues because then on YouTube you can reduce the quality, the quality of the recording, and you're able to watch it even under uh, low bandwidth. If you have good internet connection, we would advise that you you join, um, you go to the Dropbox link that has been shared on the on the chat just now, and you'll be able to download the you'll be able to download the recording from there. I hope um, all that is very clear. I know it's a lot of information, but we'll keep on reiterating it even through the uh, through the group as well as um, through the announcements that we make. The last thing that I would want to add is um, I'm sure we all received a link to a pre-course survey and would really encourage you to fill it out. I'm sure when you go to the announcement section that we talked about in the beginning, you'll be able to see the pre-course survey. You'll get a link there that you're able to provide us with information about, um, about you, about what you're excited to learn through the course, some of the expectations that you have. And uh, that information is usually very useful for us to make sure that we're also improving the course and uh, we're also widening its presence and making sure that we understand the best ways that um, you, inter you interact with learning materials. So thank you very much for everyone who has already uh, filled in the pre-course survey. If you haven't, uh, we encourage you to do so after this, um, after this webinar. I think uh, we have covered everything that was uh, meant to be covered today. So there are a couple of questions in the in the chat, in the Q&A section, sorry. And I will go through some of them that um, that have not been answered already uh, through, the, through the orientation. So one is this a self-paced course? Yes, it is. Uh, we mentioned that you can interact with the course content during your own time. You can schedule the times that you want to learn. Uh, we only have the scheduled webinars that you would need to join uh, during the specified times. And if you're not able to join that, as we've mentioned, um, the recordings will also be shared. There's someone who is having trouble with activity 1B. And uh, just to help you through specific questions that you may have, you can also reach us through email and that is um, actt at callfinder.org. 
uh, someone please post their email on the chat so that everyone is aware of the email that they can reach us, uh, reach us through. So that if you have a specific, a very specific question about the course content, then you can reach out uh, to us through there and we're able to uh, answer, answer the question very specifically to you because instead of bombarding everyone else with the same, uh, we may not be experiencing the same challenge. You can also use the Telegram group to also ask for help from the course facilitators as well as from your fellow participants who are also going through the learning process with you. So just make sure that um, you reach us through one of these channels and we'll be able to answer your questions. So how many attempts per quiz? We actually have unlimited attempts, so you can do them as many as you may want. Someone asked, how do I log into onto the portal? Um, someone please sh share the link to MOOC for Dev uh, so that uh, everyone knows how exactly to uh, to get to MOOC for Dev. Uh, can new participants be admitted if they can register today or tomorrow? Yes, the registration is still open, at least I think until the end of this week. So if you do have, um, thank you for these questions because then it helps us encourage you to share this course very widely uh, with your contact, with uh, people in your circles, just to encourage them to join in through the course and you can also learn together. It's a very good way of uh, ensuring accountability and um, ensuring that we spread the gospel that is cybersecurity. So thank you so much for uh, bringing up that question. From where can we download the mobile application? Please download through your phone's um, app store. So for example, if you're using, if you're using Google or other Android, sorry, uh, if you're using Android, um, that will be your Google Play Store. If you're using uh, Mac, that will be the app store, I think, I believe. Uh, what are the requirement marks for a certification? This will be shared as an announcement as, uh, and it will also be shared on the MOOC on the Telegram group, sorry. And uh, we'll be very clear about what is required of you to receive the certificates. But just to reiterate, um, just to reiterate, you need to score at least 50% in all the quizzes. That means each of the quizzes in the course, you have to have scored 50% and above. Should you score 30% or 40% in one of the quizzes and yet you've scored everything else above 50%, you will not receive a certificate. So please be very clear on that. That is why we have given you multiple attempts so that you're able to uh, revisit the content and keep on learning. So use the multiple attempts so that uh, you're able to make sure that all your grades are above 50% to obtain the certificate of participation. If you want certificate of completion, you should score at least 60% in all the quizzes. Uh, there's a question on, can this course be locally facilitated as an in-house group professional learning? Uh, please reach out to us through the email that was shared in the, in the chat and uh, we'll be able to talk further about uh, your request. Uh, what if someone did not attend the CTT course? We have made it, uh, we have made the ACTT course specifically standalone so that you don't need to have gone through the first one to go through the second one. So all the things in the second course, which is now ACTT, have been well explained so that um, if you do not go through CTT, you're not left out. But if you do, if you do struggle with any of the concepts, again, please reach out to us through all the platforms that I mentioned. Someone asked, how do I register? It is requesting for my number and email. Uh, is that for the course or for the, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure about your question, um, Okpako. Please reach out to us on Telegram or uh, on the email that was shared just so that we can guide you further. Is it mandatory to join the Telegram group? No, it is not mandatory. We do encourage you, however, to join and to engage with your fellow participants because even in the last offer of CTT, we saw a lot of interaction there. A lot of learning was happening there in tandem with um, the course going on. 
So I would advise you to join, but if you're not in a position to, um, it is not a requirement. It is not a requirement uh, for you to finish the course. So rather, it's not a requirement for you to be in the Telegram group so that you're given a certificate or for you to complete the course. No, it is not. As you have seen, um, all the communication is duplicated on all platforms. So that so this makes sure that if you're not on Telegram, then you will still receive all this information. Uh, how many questions in each part of the quizzes and what will be the scoring criteria? So the questions depend. Uh, the quizzes are mostly five questions. All the module assessments are 10 questions. Each question is worth 10%. Just the same way, uh, if you score three out of 10, then that is 30%. So for the quizzes, um, each question is worth 20%. So if you score 1%, then rather if you score one out of five, you convert that to percentage, you'll be able to get your 10%. So the questions are weighted just normally as you would as teacher educators, I'm sure you're very, uh, as teachers and teacher educators, I'm sure you're very, well versed with how grading happens and uh, as we mentioned you can go to check your progress under profile and you'll be able to see your results right there under difficult circumstances can we stay uh, through the activities of week one through to week two uh, yes this is possible uh, so the course content will be open throughout the duration of the course so just because we are in week two, but there are things you're not finished in week one, doesn't mean that uh, that information will be lost to you. So no, it won't. Uh, so that is why we say it's very self-paced, but you just have to complete it within the one month or rather the four weeks that we have spoken about. There are a lot of questions about the passing criteria and I have already spoken about it, but a follow-up email um, a follow-up email will be shared with you um, regarding the certificate criteria and will also remind you a lot throughout um, throughout the webinars and throughout the course. There's someone who says they are unable to join the Telegram group um, through the given link in the chat box. Uh, please remember you do have to have the app itself already installed uh, for you to be able to join the group. So if you do not have Telegram yet, uh, please go to your mobile phone's app store, search for Telegram, uh, make sure it's the verified one and uh, download it, set up your details, set up your account. And then once you click on the link, you'll be able to uh, join the Telegram group. I hope that is clear. Please download the application. After you've downloaded the application, then you'll be able to you'll be able to join us in the group. The link, if you have not saved it yet, the link will be on MOOCIT. When you go to uh, week zero, when you look at Telegram, you'll be able to find the link there as well. You could also find it on your you could also find it on your emails because we did send um, an announcement about the Telegram group. So the link is well distributed on your email on more kids you you can be able to uh to find it there there are a lot of questions about can we get a certificate yes there are two types of cert certificate sorry uh we have certificate of participation we have certificate of uh completion and um you get either or you get one so depending on how well you have performed in the course, it depends on which one that will determine which certificate you get. You will get the certificate at the end of the course. So at the end, um, that is when we'll run the certification program and you'll be able to receive your certificates on the MOOCIT application. Someone asked if it's possible to download Zoom on PC. Yes, uh, just search for Zoom. Uh, Zoom for Windows, Zoom for whichever operating system you are using, and you'll get a link to do that. Uh, can I have access to this webinar at my own convenient time? Yes, we will be sharing these recordings. And so um, you're able to go through it all over again once you receive the recording. Are we going to write an exam or it's, is it only the quizzes? It's only the quizzes. That is the only way we are 
uh, testing your knowledge as well as the activities, the practical activities that we mentioned that um, for each week you will get um, a set of activities that you have to do. Can we use MOOC for Dev on PC? There is no application on PC, but um, for this case, you use your browser. So just uh, whatever browser you use, be it um, Chrome, be it Mozilla, whichever one you use, just go to MOOC for Dev. I think there was a link posted on the chat. If there wasn't, please post it again um, so that people are able to click on that link and they're able to access the course itself. So once you log in through the browser, you're able to access the course content. The very first part of this uh, webinar, all that I showed, I was showing you from my browser and you're able to see all the details right there. So if you do not want to download the mobile application, you can actually use, you can use your browser to join the course. Are you likely to open enrollment for the CTT course? In At the moment, uh, we do not have concrete plans to do it, but again, that can always be discussed. So if um, you can reach out to us on email, please. It's a really good question. I think this is the last one that we will answer. Uh, can we share these materials like PPTs, screenshots, in other WhatsApp groups? I would say yes. This, this content, the content that we've created for the course are publicly available. And so you can share with people in your circles. Like for example, we talked about the infographic that you get each week. That is something that you could share with other people. This is also material that you could use if you're teaching a class on cybersecurity. Uh, feel free to use the content that we've created to educate others as well. However, on the Telegram group, please avoid screenshotting any identifying information. For example, any personal information on there, please do not share in other WhatsApp groups or in other Telegram groups. Do not screenshot things that, um, if you screenshot, please remove or other kind of hide any information that can be identifying of another person. So be very careful around personal information. If your question was not answered here and you are having challenges joining the course, please reach out to us via email. We'll be able to assist you. And for the Telegram group, it's not mandatory, but um, we encourage you to really join and also to observe the rules of engagement uh, because we do not want to have an influx of irrelevant information on the on the on the group so make sure that everything that you're sharing on there is uh, everything that you're sharing on there is factual relevant to the to the group itself and uh, avoid being rowdy or you know posting any any offensive material uh, because then this would make us have to take action against you. And we really do not want to do that. So thank you so much for joining us today. If you still have um, challenges that you're facing, please reach out to us. You could also ask on the Telegram group. It will be very easy to answer them immediately. Um, if your question was not answered, uh, please, you can also reach out to us and we'll be able to answer it. I have seen a lot of the questions asked here that we've already covered in this webinar. So before you ask them, uh, we would encourage you to also go through the webinar recording itself because a lot of the answers are already in the recording. So this recording will be shared as soon as we have it ready um, and you'll be able to access it all through the entirety of the course. So thank you very much for joining today. We are hoping to see you on Thursday for the week one webinar. Be on the lookout for that announcement and register for it as well. Before you finish, there's one question I've seen uh, quite a lot. Uh, is CTT a prerequisite for ACQT? I think I did mention already that we've tried as much as possible to make this specific course standalone. And that means that the content that is in this course can stand for itself without um, you having gone through the CTT course. However, if there are any concepts that uh, you encounter during this course that you feel uh, you've not understood quite well, 
um, I would advise you to reach out to us and we will provide you with resources uh, from either CTT or just additional resources and you'll be able to we'll be able to guide you through those concepts. So anything that you find difficult to understand, please reach out to us. All right, bye everyone. Thank you so much for joining.